Thank you very much uh, uh, for organizing this seminar. Thank you. Uh, it's been a great pleasure learning from uh, other peer researchers, especially those from uh, my previous working place at Shandong University. It's nice to catch up with uh, my colleagues. And uh, today I'm going to discuss a uh, work that uh, we had joint collaborations, especially uh, Vladimir was also uh, strongly involved in this project. Uh, today's discussion is to show that why uh, wind turbines need to participate in frequency control and how they are going to participate. And the title of the presentation is Gaussian Distribution-Based Inertial Control of Wind Turbine Generators for Fast Frequency Response in Low Inertia Systems. My objective today is that at the end of the, uh, today's presentation, we become familiar with the fast frequency response and how a wind turbine participates in uh, frequency control. What are the challenges and what is the innovation in this uh, uh, scheme that we proposed? Uh, we go uh, through a brief introduction and then the proposed schemes back up with the simulation and experiment, <clears throat> then jump into the conclusion and the ongoing work we have uh, through some projects. Uh, looking at the British uh, energy strategy, uh, before April this year, the UK government had installed 40 gigawatts of offshore wind power capacity, which was extremely ambitious but they leveled up this ambition to 50 gigawatts by the next eight years to accommodate uh, such fleet of offshore wind farms to the electricity network. And uh, it would uh, require investment of around 54 billions of uh, pounds uh, for wiring and connection of the fleet to the grid. Uh, also, the government is planning to uh, eliminate uh, the usage of coal power stations by 1st October 2024. We would sometimes these days uh, see the usage of coal during the peak demand and etc. This morning, a few minutes before uh, uh, I share my slides, I had this uh, British Electricity Life snapshot, I took it. So uh, we see the higher penetration of wind these days and uh, uh, less connection of uh, coal. Also, uh, the government is planning to have 70 gigawatts of uh, solar by 2035, which is five times more than their previous target. And uh, now we are in need of 10 gigawatts of low carbon hydrogen production by 2030, which will be used in uh, transportation, electricity network, and decarbonization of hard to abate sectors such as heat uh, systems and gas system. Uh, looking at the strategy of the UK is uh, we are expecting to have 120 gigawatt to 233 gigawatt wind uh, offshore wind penetration into the system by 2050. And uh, so everyone is expecting to have a totally decarbonized uh, electricity network in the UK by 2030. Now, having such roadmap in the UK and in other uh, parts of the world, we see the higher penetration of inverter-based uh, resources that would cause a decline in the rotating energy of the power system from the whole system perspective. And uh, consequently, it results in the faster rate of change of frequencies and deeper frequency nadir. In other words, we would have uh, a system which is more sensitive to frequency events. And uh, that makes our job uh, more challenging to contain the frequency within the statutory limits and avoid under frequency load shedding as the last uh, line of defense for uh, keeping the stability of the system. Uh, let's first take a look at uh, the uh, mechanism of frequency control through inertial control, primary frequency control and secondary control. So uh, normally in a system with uh, synchronous generators, uh, when there is a frequency event such as sudden increase of uh, electrical power uh, demand or loss of a generation, so there will be a mismatch in uh, electricity demand and supply. 
this will cause a natural release of kinetic energy of the synchronous generators into the power system, which naturally uh, happens because synchronous generators are directly and synchronously connected to the system. Uh, this uh, immediately happens uh, after the frequency event and it be followed up by a primary frequency control, which uh, is uh, the task by governor to increase the mechanical input of the synchronous generators based on the droop uh, term of uh, the generators to increase the rotating speed and counterbalance the frequency and we pass safely from the frequency nadir. However, when the frequency settles, we have a steady state error uh, from the nominal frequencies such as 50 Hertz. To eliminate this steady state error, we have secondary frequency control or um, automation generation, uh, automatic generation control, uh, which after a few seconds uh, automatically sends signals to some designated synchronous generators to uh, inject and increase their uh, output power. Um, however, wind turbine generators normally do not uh, participate in such mechanism because they are just working on their uh, maximum power point tracking and they are isolated from uh, the system through power electronics. So power electronics uh, work such as a barrier that uh, doesn't give uh, the momentum to, uh, to the wind turbines to be synchronized to the grid. Now, our objective is that when the frequency event occurs, we could somehow increase the wind turbine's electrical power output. Why not mechanical input? Because this is wind, we don't have any control over it. And by increasing the electrical power output of wind turbines, when the frequency event occurs, we can greatly improve the frequency nadir. That's our first target. That uh, hence, it would increase the security of the system. So this is the objective. We are going to know how it can be done and what is the optimum uh, solution. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, AGC is not activated in the UK power system. So uh, we use the old fashioned way. Uh, they use the old fashioned way of uh, calling uh, the power plants to increase their output. Uh, well, so let's take a look at uh, some general uh, schemes of inertial control of wind turbine generators. If, you, if we classify them in two groups, we have frequency dependent inertial control groups and stepwise uh, inertial controls. In frequency dependent uh, inertial or frequency based inertial control, we continuously measure the frequency of the system and we can uh, use the difference in frequency drop and multiply it by a droop term and add it to the MPPT mode of the wind turbines and participate in frequency control. And or adding another term of Rockoff loop, which is derivative of the frequency measurement and multiply it a uh, gain, which is normally two times of the inertia of the system and add it to the MPPT mode of the wind turbine and let the wind turbine participate in frequency control. Uh, this is straightforward. However, uh, it has some drawbacks such as continuously you need to measure the frequency. But when we look at the system with high penetration of inverter based systems, what is the frequency? Because each region, region has its own frequency nowadays. So frequency is no longer a global variable. And we have uh, challenges with the synchronization of uh, the frequency measurements around the power system in large scales, although thanks to the wide area uh, monitoring and control systems, it's getting easier, but still we have uh, synchronization challenges, latency and data losses. Also, it's not easy to measure the rock off accurately. So uh, we have sensitivities as well. Another uh, drawback is that such methods require low and high pass filters and their adjustment and tuning is very challenging and it could uh, result in uh, different uh, frequency uh, 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 nadirs. 
Stepwise inertial control directly use the kinetic energy of the rotating blades of the wind turbine generators. So we pre-define and pre-design a power reference scheme for the wind turbine generators. And uh, it also contributes to frequency nadir improve, uh, improvement better than the frequency dependent uh, groups. However, it gives a uh, secondary frequency drop, which I uh, explain it shortly in the next few slides. And uh, in such schemes, we don't continuously measure the frequency, which can be good and bad. So uh, let's take a look at stepwise inertial control. We develop this, uh, explain this scheme, and then we jump to the Gaussian scheme. So looking at the mechanism of uh, wind turbine generators, so they operate with different uh, wind speed. We have different mechanical uh, power curve. And so the higher the wind speed, the higher the mechanical curve, and uh, we can extract um, larger electrical power from the wind. So the primary objective of the wind turbines is to extract maximum power from the wind. Uh, so the electrical power output is normally at the maximum point of the mechanical power curve. Let's take a look at one uh, wind speed of uh, constant wind speed here. So the wind turbine normally operates at this MPPT mode and it has some limitations. It cannot uh, rotate very fast, uh, too fast. It would damage the windings and uh, uh, we have some mechanical issues. It can't rotate too slow because if it goes too slow, it will stop rotating because it's 100 or more than 100 tons of blades are rotating. So if the speed are, are too slow, they will uh, finally stop rotating. So we have some uh, speed limits for wind turbine generators. Now, our objective is that when we have disturbance, which I mean frequency event, act, uh, active power mismatch, we need inertial control. That means uh, increasing the uh, electrical power output of the wind turbine generators. <clears throat> if the wind turbine operates at the MPPT mode, then the rotor speed is staying constant considering the wind speed is constant. But when we inject incremental power of the, uh, from the wind uh, turbines, what happens is that the electrical power output of the wind turbine will be larger than the mechanical power input. So based on the swing equation, we have the uh, less and less rotating speed. That means the rotor speed will uh, decelerate. Now, we cannot let it decelerate eventually till stop because we will lose a wind turbine generator. That means we need to stop this incremental power action or overproduction. When we terminate it, our objective is to bring back the rotor speed to its previous working point. That means we make electrical power output of the wind turbines below the mechanical power input. So, Again, based on the swing equations, the rotor speed uh, will start uh, to accelerate and recover back to its maximum uh, power point mode. Now, what are the effects of such actions on frequency control, which is our objective? So if the wind turbine doesn't participate in frequency control, that means if it operates at MPPT mode, we have a frequency uh, drop and a deep frequency nadir. Now, if the wind turbine participates in, in uh, frequency control, that means injecting incremental power, the frequency nadir improves. However, when we terminate this action, the, this termination, so the power system will look at it as another disturbance because we are playing with the electrical power the active power. So the power system will regard it as a secondary frequency drop. Now, this secondary frequency drop could be a big issue. It could be worse than the first frequency drop, or in some cases, it can be worse than the case when the wind turbines didn't participate in frequency control. So instead of helping frequency recovery, we might make it worse. So it's very serious issue. Now we need to look at a solution 
not to have such uh, dangerous activities and operation of secondary frequency drop or a risky maneuver uh, when uh, the power system stability is at stake. So uh, we came up with a, a solution which we called it Gaussian distribution based inertial control. Where uh, it came from, Gaussian function is an archetypical function in nature. We, we see it uh, in a lot of places. So it's a function that shows the distribution of data around a mean value, an average value, and shown by standard deviation. So if the data is scattered away from the mean value, that means it's deviated away from it. So the sigma will increase in the Gaussian function. Now, we are going to use the concept of standard deviation and use it for wind turbine frequency control. How we can do it is to apply such a idea and design a power reference scheme for wind turbine generators by similarly having electrical power as the average value and controlling the distribution or trajectory desired by the uh, standard deviation. And we design it in the rotor speed mode. So everything will be straightforward. Now, we need to ensure that the wind turbine will uh, reach to an equilibrium point and it doesn't over decelerate or it doesn't give issues of secondary frequency drops. Therefore, by developing and doing some mathematical manipulations, we introduce a point where it should converge. This point is where the wind turbine will converge to a rotating speed, which we call it the mean value. This mean value means the rotating speed of the wind turbine is the average of previous working point and the minimum allowable uh, working point. So having such uh, conditions, finally we reach to our objective, which is using the uh, standard deviation of Gaussian function as a control parameter for inertial control of wind turbine generators. Now, is this, the question rises, is this the best uh, trajectory that we can introduce as the reference power to the wind turbine generators? Then we had uh, several criteria. Uh, two main criteria are objectives that we would like to have improvement in frequency nadir. Second criteria is that the action can also, so not only help the primary frequency control, it should also help the secondary frequency control. That means the settling frequency eventually should be higher than steady state frequency. Having these two criteria in mind and developing uh, the method, and doing the test with uh, different wind speeds and different uh, uh, trajectories, we came up with analogy that if, if we land and converged earlier, like using a smaller standard deviation of the Gaussian function, we have higher settling frequency. That means it's good for the secondary frequency control but we have lower frequency nadir. It's not very good for primary frequency control. And this is more important. If we converge late, that means if we use a large standard deviation as a control parameter, we have lower second uh, settling frequency and slightly higher frequency nadir. But if we converge to the right point, which we designed it as omega mean, that's the mean value I explained earlier, we have both high settling frequency and high frequency nadir. That means a desired primary frequency action and uh, secondary frequency action. So also uh, converging to this particular uh, curve allows the wind turbine generators to be robust against cascade events, which haven't been looked into in literature. So also uh, the motivation is that in uh, August, 2019, uh, there was a, a blackout in the UK when we had cascade events. And uh, thanks to the under frequency load sheddings, so uh, it wouldn't uh, scatter all around the UK. So 
the question was how can we design a scheme that also allows uh, support for the cascade events so when the we land here when it converge to an equilibrium point we still have room and more kinetic energy stored in the rotating mass of the wind turbine to again contribute for frequency control for secondary uh, for another uh, cascade event also when you converge to an equilibrium point it's robust against wind intermittency as well um, so these are two um, extra points and advantages that uh, we came up with the solution so having this in mind, we tested uh, through simulations in the Exciland Power Factory on IEEE 9 bus system through uh, numerous uh, tests and uh, compared the results with literature. For example, just showing a few examples uh, here that uh, with the wind speed and a large uh, power disturbance, the frequency nadir improved greatly compared to other uh, uh, available schemes in literature. Also, if an abrupt wind change occurs, sudden wind drop, it was robust and didn't uh, face a secondary frequency uh, uh, nadir. Also, the rotor speed converged faster and earlier than other schemes. That gives uh, momentum to be stable against uh, wind changes. Also, uh, testing on larger scheme uh, scales um, of IEEE 39 bus system, uh, we uh, did the tests again on different wind speed, different uh, power disturbances, and the results were consistent. Also, for two cascade events, we can see that uh, in the solid green line, the frequency nadir improved. For the second event, because uh, we imposed a very serious second uh, cascade event, so most of the uh, frequency controls failed or uh, breached the under frequency load shadings, but uh, the proposed scheme could uh, contain the frequency uh, higher than other methods. Another serious uh, case study was to have uh, wind spin change as well as two cascade events. So to make uh, ser uh, the condition very serious. Uh, in such condition also, uh, the scheme showed the robust uh, uh, outcome that uh, frequency nadir improved and uh, was robust against wind changes. Now, from simulation to experiments, uh, we use different facilities to test the scheme. And uh, one was uh, to use uh, uh, synchronous generators, wind turbines, and active uh, feedback loads controlled by PLC and designed the control scheme uh, in the PLC and uploaded there. We can see that the frequency nadir improved compared to MPPT mode. And this is uh, the Gaussian, so there is noise as well, so the Gaussian distribution and the convergence of the rotor speed to an equilibrium point, which is here. Uh, these are the results for electrical um, performance of the wind turbines. Now, another question is that when we design an inertial control, is it good for mechanical uh, operation of the wind turbines? Because it's a million dollar investment uh, for an op uh, operator or a manufacturer or owner. And also uh, all our mechanical movements. So. Uh, we have fatigue, stress, and uh, breakdowns. So we want to ensure that there, there is no stress or very little stress on the shafts or the blades of the wind turbine generators. So this test was done by uploading the fast codes, uh, which are for aerodynamic studies and fatigue and stress on the uh, mechanical parts of the wind turbine generators into the PLC and then testing the results, which were very similar uh, to what we had. And eventually, so to conclude it, uh, having this uh, Gaussian distribution based inertial control scheme has uh, no mechanical stress and fatigue on the blades, which is uh, good news for the owners and operators to apply it simply uh, to the wind turbines. 
And another experimental test was using the real-time simulator using OPOLRT uh, technologies that uh, we developed a two area power system where we had uh, uh, in area one, it was uh, wind integrated system. And uh, we had different scenarios if the frequency event occurs in area one, if frequency uh, event occurs in area two, and what, what are the contributions and the effects on frequency deviation in area one, area two, and the Thailand power oscillations. So to sum it up, uh, if the frequency event occurs in area one because the wind turbines are in the same region, the contribution was uh, magnificent. So as we see that it greatly improved the frequency nadir while other uh, methods or if the wind turbines does not participate, we'd, we would have very severe frequency nadir. But when we use the wind turbines and make them to contribute you know, as fast frequency response, so the contribution is very significant. However, if the frequency event occurs in area two, because we have a tie line and it's separated area and it's very far from the wind turbines, the contribution is good, but not as significant as uh, where the wind turbines were close to the event. So as we can see, the frequency Nadir improved using the Gaussian distribution scheme, but not really significant compared to uh, when we had it in the same area. So this again bring a lot of uh, questions and uh, areas for research and developments uh, to coordinate resources available in different um, uh, regions and coordin coordinate them optimally. Well, uh, so the part that we use the, as a real-time simulator is from the facilities we have at the Intelligent Control and Smart Energy Research uh, Group. Uh, we have the privilege of having a totally independent building uh, uh, only belong to our research team, which uh, include uh, around 20 PhD students, all are uh, fully supported by scholarships and uh, mostly Marie Curie scholarships and uh, uh, three uh, postdoctoral research fellows. Um, we have three laboratories at the Institute House. And by the way, the building is located at the Science Park. So we are neighbor with the Schneider, um, Bosch, LG, and uh, some other uh, companies. And uh, we have three laboratories at our building. Uh, one is Renewable Energy Integration and Smart Grid Lab. Another one is Offshore Renewable Energy Lab and Autonomous System uh, Laboratory. In the Autonomous System uh, Laboratory, uh, we have uh, built the first of its kind uh, uh, UAV vehicles, uh, uh, airplanes that fully support it by um, uh, solar uh, wings in the UK, first of its kind in the UK. And uh, we have extensive research on offshore renewable energies and also renewable energy integration, which uh, I'm in charge of it. And uh, you can see it from my background. And uh, so inside the, this uh, lab of renewable energy uh, integration, smart grid lab, we have, uh, a grid emulator, which can emulate the grid for us, and three other power electronic load emulators, which are four quadrants, bi-directional loads, can emulate any kind of uh, renewable energy technologies. And uh, we have a 30 kilowatt of uh, battery energy storage, as well as a 17 kilowatt of PV panel, uh, rooftop panel, uh, two heat pumps and a motor generator set, which you would see it from my background, um, uh, res arrived uh, two weeks ago and I need to connect it to the, the hardware here, which takes some time. And everything you see here, all the hardware can be controlled by the real-time simulator in uh, real time. And uh, before I move forward, I'd like to show you the real-time data of the PV right now, although it's cloudy. But uh, 
So we are able to see the real time uh, data of the wind, uh, uh, sorry, this rooftop uh, panel. Um, today, well, it's not very uh, big, but we have uh, around 835 watt. It's not much, but it's totally cloudy today. So I'm actually surprised we have such uh, generation today. It should be almost zero. And But for weekly production, you would see that uh, we have uh, quite, uh, uh, it was very cloudy this uh, last couple of weeks, monthly data and etc. yearly, and all the data can be exported for research purposes. And uh, we have contributed, so the building, electrically speaking, the building is totally green and uh, our consumption comes from the rooftop PV, which is enough for our day-to-day -day works. And uh, we have uh, so this is equivalent to uh, more than 230 trees planted to uh, save uh, and avoid CO2 emissions. We are uh, expanding the building with uh, some hydrogen facilities and also, as I mentioned, motor generator uh, coupled together for the wind turbine generators, which will be connected to the uh, existing hardware. And uh, so moving forward. Uh, I'll show you one uh, test uh, done by the hardware uh, we had for frequency control. So uh, what we have here is a microgrid system of different resources, PV, wind, uh, we have the load, a battery and other res uh, energy resources and diesel generators, model in MATLAB Simulink. And uh, we, we used three power electronic load emulators to emulate uh, the wind, the battery energy uh, source and other uh, energy source for us energy system. And each of these facilities were equipped with inertial control, droop control, or combination of them. So we, it's a degree of freedom to use any of them or uh, both of them at the same time. Also, the wind turbine is uh, running in MPPT mode, and it's able to be equipped with MPPT plus droop plus inertial or uh, any of them. So. Uh, the grid uh, emulator emulates the power system where we have it here. And uh, three other uh, electronic loads will be wind turbines, battery energy storage, and other uh, energy source. They are slaves uh, under control of the master Opal RT real time simulators. Uh, and uh, communication is through Modbus communications. And so the microgrid system. Um, has been modeled, as I mentioned, in MATLAB Simulink. And uh, so I designed a cons console, a system, a user interface that uh, uh, you can connect or disconnect any of the hardware at any moment, uh, like a switch, uh, on the fly when it's operating. Also, the frequency event, you can just click and uh, say when the frequency event can occur. You're also able to do any control schemes. For example, I used some codes like one means inertial only, two means droop only. If you type two, that means your wind turbines will use droop term only. If you type three, it will be inertial plus droop control together. So uh, you can uh, either monitor the real-time data in the scope or uh, through another software. So I'd like to show you one example that when the entire microgrid system uh, suddenly disconnected from the grid and there is a power mismatch inside the microgrid. So the wind turbine battery and the other resource uh, are trying to uh, counterbalance the frequency mismatch. So you see it's at 50 Hertz and uh, when the microgrid system is disconnected from the rest of the grid, the frequency will drop. And uh, as you can see, it's trying to counterbalance and bring it back to uh, 50 Hertz. After a few seconds, uh, we reach to the 50 Hertz frequency. Uh, this uh, particular example was when the wind turbine was operating at inertial control, other energy source was uh, inertial plus droop and uh, the battery energy storage was inertial control. So a combination of them together counterbalanced uh, the frequency. And different examples, uh, uh, we have done different uh, scenarios, inertial, inertial only, or inertial plus droop, and etc. 
to conclude, um, for the inertial uh, Gaussian inertial control scheme, the proposed uh, scheme uh, Gaussian distribution based inertial con uh, control was implemented as wind turbine fast frequency response. The standard deviation was used as a control parameter. And also the Gaussian trajectory uh, reaches to an equilibrium point where the wind turbine rotor speed is at the average point uh, between the previous uh, MPPT more, uh, working point and the minimum uh, rotor speed. Also, no wind turbine rotor recovery is required until the AGC is activated because we do not want to do any risk when the frequency is going to be uh, maintained uh, because stability of the system is a priority. We do not want to do any other maneuvers and operations risky to make the uh, situations worse. So it was um, very opposite from literature uh, when we discussed it, but uh, luckily the reviewers were very supportive. And also the technique was uh, tested on IEEE 9 bus and 39 bus system, and also uh, two different experimental platforms. The literature showing and give, uh, gave us the confidence that, uh, that there is, uh, the scheme is uh, implementable. And the approach is straightforward and easy to be used. Um, also, uh, for future works, uh, we could, uh, and we will work on coordinated control strategies of the offshore wind farms with other wind uh, resources to provide ancillary services, not only for frequency, but also for other uh, parts of the grid, such as uh, voltage uh, control and power oscillation damping, for example. So considering AC and HVDC uh, connections between the offshore wind farm and onshore grid is another uh, part we uh, will look into it and transient stability assessment using real-time hardware in the loop experimental validations. And in particular, the last one, I would like to uh, go a little bit in detail, is that uh, nowadays uh, with the uh, IBR inverter-based resources uh, system, so we higher penetration of uh, inverter-based resources, uh, we have a low inertia grid. So we, when we had high uh, inertia grid, so everything was uh, uh, smooth and easier to control and contain. But with low inertia systems, we have a more sensitive uh, grid uh, prone to stability issues and uh, oscillatory interactions of uh, power electronic resources. So therefore, uh, we need to be equipped with the right tool and simulation tools to study the systems. Uh, one type of tools are phasor methods or RMS methods, such as PSSE, power factory, etc. Uh, other uh, forms are uh, electromagnetic transient based uh, simulation tools, EMT modes, uh, which are good for uh, more transient studies. And it's important for um, uh, low inertia grids. And uh, uh, when we compare the RMS and EMT modes, uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, a EMT mode doesn't, uh, uh, RMS mode doesn't reflect, uh, for example, HVDC commutation failures and et cetera. Um, also, uh, RMS study sometimes doesn't converge uh, when we have a severe transient uh, issues. And uh, uh, we had uh, some issues, uh, uh, transient issues in the UK power system. So I just, uh, with the sake of time, I'll go faster. And uh, what uh, uh, what we can do is to uh, consider both RMS and uh, phaser uh, EMT mode studies. Uh, uh, in operative real-time technologies, you can use uh, features such as e-phaser sim to study uh, RMS modes or hyperseam for electromagnetic transient using PSCAD uh, models. And uh, I just go faster, I realize I missed a time. So it's possible to uh, uh, import the power factory model inside the OpalRT uh, real time simulator and then design a pin data and run it in real time, which uh, we did it uh, as well. Also, we can have high, uh, EMT using PSCAD. Uh, imported and uh, integrated, uh, adjusted into HyperC. And this one is the one that uh, we will work with National Grid ESO, which we received the project actually yesterday. So <laughs> it's brand new. 
it's, it has been approved yesterday and it's called Transient Stability Assessment of GB Power System based on both real-time uh, uh, phaser and EMT simulation. Thank you very much and apologies for uh, speaking uh, quite long. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed uh, and the uh, brilliant presentation. I hope that uh, all students uh, could enjoy in the quality of presentation as well, just formally observed. Uh, the quality of presentation was exceptionally high with the, some dynamics, uh, which uh, definitely contributed uh, to, you know, attracting attention of attendees. And uh, I'm aware that uh, you are very good at that. And uh, thanks for, again, confirming that your presentation skills are uh, exceptional. Thank you very much for your comments. My pleasure. Let me now invite the audience uh, to raise some questions. Uh, the topic uh, related to issues with frequency stability and frequency regulation in systems with low inertia is one of those topics uh, in which uh, Shandong University has uh, provided some interesting results in the past. And uh, I am really very happy that uh, you have moved forward. And, and uh, I do expect that uh, maybe Wei Yu has already prepared his question. So please, questions. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Mustafa, for your uh, impressive uh, presentation. I can see that you are still continuing uh, the work uh, of uh, about inertia control, and I'm very interested in that because I'm also doing the same topic. Um, well, I have two questions about the um, uh, a Gaussian distributed uh, approach uh, on inertia control. Uh, can, uh, maybe uh, could you uh, share the uh, slide again? Maybe the sure. uh, page ten. Page ten. Okay. Yes. Uh, Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, I'm not very familiar with this uh, Gaussian distributed approach, but I think it belongs to some um, uh, st uh, some method in statistic, uh, statistic right? Yes. Uh, so it could be I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, what is the reason. Uh, that you select the mean value between the initial rotor speed and the minimum rotor speed uh, as the destination of the rotor speed uh, during the inertial process, uh, control process. Uh, so yeah, why so do you select this uh, value as the uh, uh, converged rotor speed during inertial control? Maybe yeah, I, so there is, yeah. yeah so Okay, no problem. So the question is that why we choose this uh, average point as the equilibrium point? Yes, yes. For Gaussian distribution. Well, yeah. uh, okay, I'll show it here. So uh, let's look at it from this angle. If we converge earlier, we have less contribution of kinetic energy and that would uh, make the frequency nadir a slightly improved, not very uh, much. So let's look at it here. If the uh, frequency, uh, if we set, um, um, use this equilibrium point, mm -hmm. the frequency nadir will be dip. So it's, uh, yes. it's like yes. 49.65. Yes. And uh, however, on the other hand, the secondary frequency control will be better. That means the settling frequency will be higher. And uh, if we converge later, let's say here, so mm -hmm. we are talking about somewhere here. That means frequency nadir has improved, but slightly. You see, it's almost a flat plane here compared to the average point we designed it. After this average point is like flat, but before that it's like a deep valley. So here is the point that we, uh, we found very interesting. And also if you really land very late, uh, it, the convergence makes the settling frequency even lower than the steady state frequency. That means in some countries when it's uh, automatic generation control, 
will not be activated. That's yes, a serious yes. issue. Yeah. So, but when you reach to an equilibrium point, we define it as the average point, it's just perfect, or in Chinese language, it's gong gong hao. <laughs> that means, <laughs> yeah. okay. that, means that if you, if you land earlier, you will have very deep valley of frequency nadir. If you land further, it's if not you're much not, not uh, further improve the frequency nadir. Nothing much, much. It's, a, it's, a, it's a flat plane, and then suddenly yeah. it goes to deep okay. plane. So therefore, here is the perfect location. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this now I under I can understand why you choose this um, uh, this rotor speed value as the destination. Uh, but uh, uh, well, you, you you see this figure, uh, the relationship showing the relationship between wind speed, uh, suddenly rotor speed, and the frequency is very important. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm curious how you. Uh, you 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 uh, obtain this figure. Uh, did you do by simulation or uh, yes. you, you uh, use some one... uh, mathematical uh, algorithms? Yes. Yeah, so uh, it can be both done by mathematical uh, functions or extensive simulations using those mathematical functions. So okay. uh, developing such uh, control. This is the control parameters. You can uh, use different uh, omega means here. Yeah. So this is the omega you are going to play with, or in in Gaussian function, this is the x you are going to play with. So yes. uh, therefore, uh, when you adjust this omega mean, you will realize that uh, there you, you can reach to such uh, schemes. But uh, you also need to uh, use different wind uh, speeds. Then it will be a three D presentation. Otherwise, it will be just one wind speed. So. When you collect all the data, you will uh, see the bigger picture. That's the reason. Okay. We, we yeah. Okay. Yes, I I, I think uh, yeah may, maybe I I didn't uh, uh, because I didn't read the paper uh, in in detail. So uh, I I think maybe if we can find some uh, some mathematical proof to uh, saying that uh, this uh, mean value is the best value that we can find, uh, I mm -hmm. think it would be better. Maybe you have already uh, proved that in your paper, but I didn't read it uh, in detail. Yeah, so I will look into that future in future. Yeah, we proved uh, and developed the control parameter. So uh, like the manufacturers can easily use this parameter. And okay. Uh, like free of charge, <laughs> they can uh, okay. uh, use it. But uh, and it's very easy for them to uh, control it. Everything is just done, straightforward. But to mathematically prove that this is the uh, the, the best like, value, optimum value. I think that's uh, an interesting thing to look at the uh, look at it. But uh, engineers normally don't prove everything mathematically. Uh, yeah. We could do that. Why not? Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. I wouldn't uh, finding challenging. Uh, it would be. Uh, easy to do so. Okay. Okay. Great. okay thank you. I, I have another question uh, because you mentioned uh, mechanical stress, right? The, because the initial uh, inertia control, the participation of uh, uh, frequency regulation through inertia control will uh, do some, will have some uh, uh, adverse effect on mechanical stress. And uh, you, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. It's in this slide you said that the proposed, um, uh, the proposed approach can achieve a, 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 a less uh, mechanical stress, right? Yes. Uh, uh, can Can you uh, show me the reason why this uh, proposed approach can achieve a better? Uh, a performance in uh, reducing the mechanical stress because I, I think uh, maybe there's um, not too okay. much uh, link between the uh, mechanical stress and the, uh, the, the, the algorithm. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, the two ways we can look at it. One is through uh, result. When we compare the result of the proposed scheme compared to mm -hmm. MPPT mode, MPPT mode doesn't have mechanical stress uh, on the wind turbine shaft because just rotating at the MPPT mode, everything is fine. 
no sudden uh, interactions, mechanical interactions. So it's like you're driving a car just on a highway, no sudden gear change or sudden uh, maneuvers or steering wheels. So everything is yes. going smoothly. So this is an MPPT mode. When you compare your results of the proposed scheme, whatever you propose, when you compare it with MPPT, they are very close to your desired MPPT mode. So as you see, okay. everything is very close. So that means uh, looking at the result, you see that, oh, there is very little stress. Another way to look at it, but is more advanced, is that when you look at the Gaussian distribution, there is no uh, sudden sharp changes compared to stepwise inertial control. If you remember what we did back in the days, uh, five years ago, at Shandong, <laughs> yeah. uh, we had stepwise inertial control suddenly going stepwise and suddenly drop. So it's a 900, uh, sorry, 90 degree sudden uh, drop. That means the rotating shaft, the rotating blades of wind turbine suddenly need to slow down or again, accelerate. So these actions have a lot of stress on a hundred tone of blade when they are rotating and suddenly need to gear back. So such stresses are not seen here because it's just a smooth sliding down to the equilibrium point. That's, that's why it's make it very interesting. I was particularly looking at a function with no sharp edges. <laughs> that's why actually Gosen came to my mind that, oh, it could be a solution. And then after developing mathematical equation and then doing the test uh, in different laboratories, consulting with other experts like Vladimir and uh, et cetera, then the result uh, was what we were looking for. Okay, great, great. I, I, and now I can understand because the active power uh, changes smoothly, slowly, uh, so it yes. reduces the mechanical stress on the wind yes. turbine. But uh, yes, yeah, uh, maybe in the future you can compare different approaches uh, uh, of the inertia control the, it regards, regarding the mechanical stress. So because you only uh, uh, compared the proposed scheme and MPVT, and you can see that uh, they are very close. So it will, uh, there's no uh, significant uh, 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 mechanical stress on the wind turbines if you use this approach, but uh, we don't know whether, uh, we don't yeah, know excellent. how the uh, mechanical stress is uh, if we uh, use other approaches. Because, uh, uh, yes. if, if you can do that, uh, I think it would be better, yeah. Excellent question. Thank you very much. This is very uh, important and very useful. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. 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 Yeah, that's thanks. all my uh, uh, what I want to ask. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Uh, thank you for this question. Um, may I just uh, ask a question? So this whole work is related to double fed induction generator, Mustafa. Uh, Yes, so uh, the simulation was on the doubly fed induction generator, but the experimental result of the first experiment was on uh, PMSG, permanent magnet synchronous generator. All right, so the reason I'm asking this question, so what are we doing uh, in this whole process? So we have electrical power system, which uh, has a problem of retaining uh, active power balance. Uh, consequently of retaining the uh, power system frequency at uh, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So the problem statement and the challenge is how to quickly uh, inject active power to contribute to this balance. And in the, this specific case, we want to use available kinetic energy actually available in uh, the rotating masses of the generator in question. That's why it could be double fed induction generator. It can be other rotating machines, uh, or it can be also type four full converter connected wind turbine. Yes. In yes. this case, so you are talking about uh, control by changing the position of uh, blades. And this has to do also with mechanical stress. May I just ask a question? Is there any other way of uh, controlling of this active power if we assume that this could be also type four generator? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for summarizing uh, uh, the entire uh, 
presentation. That was uh, correct. So uh, what we are going to use or what we used is to uh, utilize a portion of available kinetic energy of the rotating mass and inject it uh, into the system when it's needed using designing a power reference, sending uh, it to the rotor side converter and uh, do the fast frequency response. We are not uh, going to control uh, the pitch angle or the yaw angle of the wind turbine generators. We are just using the rotating speed of the wind turbine generator, yes. uh, the available kinetic energy. Uh, other way to do frequency control uh, are, for example, uh, more power electronic based, such as uh, using the DC bus, uh, bus between the um, uh, rotor side converter and grid side converter, or other techniques they are uh, developing. But more or less, all our similar scheme that you are going to use the available kinetic energy uh, and inject it into the system. One way is to design a reference scheme. One way is to use the games such as uh, droop terms or Rockoff terms, uh, as we called it frequency uh, based inertial control. And other ways are to uh, more power electronics. They uh, come up with some switching uh, algorithms uh, and then they inject uh, the kinetic energy. Uh, but the philosophy is the same. We are using the kinetic energy. Another uh, thing I would like to mention is pitch angle controls, for example, deloading, but deloading is not for fast frequency response, it's for frequency regulation, for dis uh, economic dispatch and unit commitment for long-term frequency support. It's not for short-term transient frequency support mm -hmm. because pitch angle takes, uh, few, uh, for example, one degree uh, probably to, would take five seconds. We don't have five seconds to wait for mechanical movement of the pitch uh, blade. Yes, yes, good. All right, thank you very much. I'll just add then if we want to sacrifice kinetic energy, then the question is for how long we will do this. And this has technical limitation, which you nicely described and uh, great. Uh, further questions, I believe that there might be more questions. Uh, I see something from chat box, I didn't check. But... Yeah, let me double check if Joe Young, uh, you'd like to ask a question or not. Uh, uh, yes, I you're see. muted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first, uh, I would like to say hello to you and uh, congratulations to your impressive work uh, in both theory and uh, laboratory, and also the newly approved project. Congratulations. Can you speak, speak a little bit louder and or to put your microphone a little bit uh, closer to uh, your mouth? Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, first, I would like to say hello. So, haven't seen you for a long time, and yes, also yes, congratulations uh, to your impressive work, uh, both in theory and uh, laboratory. Uh, it's uh, very uh, impressive, uh, as I can see from your background, and also your newly approved project. Uh, I have got uh, maybe also two questions. Sure. Uh, the first question is about. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, your control strategy is for uh, short-term frequency control. Uh, and uh, as, uh, as we can see from the results, that uh, the data has been improved. Uh, um, I, let me say, uh, is it equivalent to that uh, this kind of control increase the inertia of the system, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, does such uh, schemes improve the inertia of the system? It's hard to answer, to be honest, because uh, uh, the inertia of the rotating mass, you are using it, and we, uh, I don't have uh, the, like, uh, uh, I don't have the, the monitoring scheme to see how much is the inertia of the wind turbine, and I'm using it at the moment, because the frequency is also changing. Uh, but we can estimate it, and the it, it does contribute to the whole inertia of the system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is like a, a variable inertia depending on the size of the dis disturbance and uh, also the condition of the wind turbine, like uh, the rotating speed of the blades, right? Yes, yes, yeah. From the, yeah, 
So uh, we have the H, the moment of inertia of uh, the in rotating inertia of the wind turbines by manufacturers. We can have the <coughs> kinetic energies calculations, but whether that is the true inertia of the wind turbines contributing at the moment, I mean, in real time is a question. And I believe there was one research by uh, 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 Shandong University working on it as well. <laughs> yeah, I think we are, I think the reason yeah. why uh, Professor Tin asked this question is that we are uh, doing a project about evaluation yes, yes, yes. of uh, power system inertia. Mm -hmm. But the first yes. uh, question is to uh, how we define inertia in a power system with high penetration of uh, renewable energies. Uh, that's emulated inertia can be regarded as uh, a power yes, system yes. inertia. Yeah, it's a, it's a philosophy question. I mean, uh, uh, by the way, sorry, uh, Joyang. Yeah, I didn't uh, respond to the greeting. It's, it's good to hear you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, um, so uh, this is, as I mentioned, it's kind of philosophical questions. What is the moment of inertia? Um, I had uh, similar discussions with one professor uh, in Denmark. Mm -hmm. I mean, in one conference in Denmark, it was a hot, a hot debate that when we consider a 100% power electronic based system, 100% all power electronic based, what is inertia in that system? Uh, no, any synchronous generators, no hydro plants, no gas system, nothing. All power electronics. So do we have a system with inertia? How can we define it? So that uh, some, some said uh, that we don't even need to define inertia. So this is totally a philosophical uh, question. Uh, some believe that in such systems, we don't need to uh, care more about uh, inertia I and mean, care about the, what is H. Some would argue that, okay, traditionally we had uh, inertia of the synchronous generator. So we are emulating the power system. So we need to have emulated inertia defined as well in our dictionary. So uh, honestly, it's un answered questions to me as well, but I would feel that uh, we need some definition for it. So it's a bigger question to be answered by uh, fellows like Vladimir and etc. I, I, <laughs> I, I can help a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it, can be, it can be philosophical question. However, we are engineers. And yes, uh, we could convert <laughs> philosophy into practical things. Fantastic, uh, yes. I would just uh, give one hint. If we have uh, inner, firstly, we should mm -hmm. agree the terminology. We have moment of inertia, which is a result of rotating uh, uh, movement uh, of mass. That's the first thing. This is rotational inertia, which we are talking about. Then we have also synthetic, synthetic inertia, which are mechanisms uh, uh, resulting from control mechanisms. And we can, at the first time step, we can just introduce something what is called effective inertia as a sum of uh, rotational inertia plus uh, synthetic inertia. That could be one next step. And this synthetic inertia actually is a somehow variable. It's not fixed uh, like a moment of inertia. However, we should also consider that in our terminology, we also talk about kinetic energy. If you talk to people from industry, they do not talk about inertia constant. They don't talk about J. They talk about the kinetic energy. If you ask them, what's the system inertia? They say uh, one gigawatt second or five gigawatt second. This is actually kinetic energy. And the uh, inertia constant is a uh, defined time constant. This is a time constant which is obtained, as you see, that's wrong, gigavolt per second, because this is kinetic energy in this graph. And I use this graph in my reports. That's a graph used from National Grid. So most of it's not your mistake, inert, Inertia H is inertia constant, which is obtained as kinetic energy divided by rate of power. So these are a couple of things which we should firstly agree what is what, and then we can discuss things, and this will definitely help when we know what we are talking about. I already yes. had many discussions of this type. Sorry for this long digression, but I wanted yes. just to help. And in some of CRA working groups, uh, 
we are working uh, on, but with, with people from industry, how? And in this context, I would even make the problem more complicated. It's a definition of regional inertia. What means you have different regions with different inertias. Couple of things have already been addressed in, in few papers, but there is a need for more collaborative papers. And I'm inviting all uh, attending this uh, uh, meeting uh, to work on it and to link universities. Let's write a good paper. What does it mean? Let's think about it. What is inertia? Let's start from the very beginning because there is a this gap in understanding of these fundamental things, which will help us then to define things and to say, okay, that's H constant. This is a kinetic energy. This is a J moment of inertia, which is defined in, you know, in, and in the way which is the integral of something, uh, mass and uh, uh, radius and something like that. Okay, sorry for this digression. Yeah, thank you very much for the comments. Uh, thank you, Joyong, for an excellent yeah. question. Also, thanks, yeah. Vladimir, for uh, responding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe another idea then, is just to use uh, measurements instead of to estimating, uh, I mean, to calculate the inertia constant. As you have mentioned, it is variable and it is hard to pre predict. Maybe we can use the measurements that can you use. Yes. The yeah. And, and the then issue. And the issue is that we have different types of methods. One type of method is waiting for a disturbance. Another type is using ambient data, what is more challenging. And I think that at least these are teams working on this topic. Uh, uh, yes. yes, and also uh, the inertia of the induction motors as in the load side. We normally don't see there's but still we have, yeah. Mm -hmm. They are rotating, but if they are connected over inverters, then they are not contributing. Yes. But they could also provide synthetic uh, impact. So that's quite a nice thing. It's yes. nice to have nice research topics for us. Exactly. Yeah. So it's always yeah. motivating to uh, discuss about such uh, yeah. issues. Yes. I received one more question uh, from Stefan. Yeah, you uh, know, this question is a more um, formal, more formal uh, nature. May I ask one more question? Uh, how can you? Uh, determine data here. Uh, okay, another question. Yes, yes. Uh, how yeah. we define delta F, PF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent yeah. question. Yeah. Yes, excellent question. Uh, this uh, delta PF is the incremental power we inject into the system. Uh, what we defined was one third of the um, event size. Would uh, give the, you, yeah, but again, the question is that how we calc uh, how we know the event size. So there are two approaches. One uh, is to estimate the event right using the information of the system using wide area monitoring and control systems, PMUs around and uh, estimate the frequency, estimate the inertia, and then uh, calculate the event size. Then we uh, make it one third. Another one is that uh, more comprehensive and uh, wind turbine manufacturers normally would do is 10 to 15% of the operating point. Whatever they have, 10 to 15% they can inject because they are very conservative and let's say scared to increase much larger because you know, it's a, as I mentioned, it's a massive uh, mechanical movement happening in the system. You cannot, suddenly increase it to infinity. So uh, practically speaking, 10 to 15% of the uh, active power or uh, MPPT mode, they inject. They are thinking to inject at, at least. So it's a more like an imperative approach rather yeah. than like you mathematically derive that the one third of the uh, even the size is the uh, optimal one, or let's say, yes, yes, so in optimal we, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, so this one, uh, this one third was through uh, uh, numerous uh, simulation studies, no mathematical uh, um, uh, development. Okay. But uh, uh, 10 to 15 percent mm. is experience from the uh, just uh, engineers in practice. Okay. Mustafa, uh, can can you remember that we have published uh, one paper about uh, finding the optimal 
uh, both the optimal incremental power and the termination time uh, uh, at the same time uh, using artificial intelligence. I think maybe yeah. that will help in uh, this uh, question, maybe. Yes. But the termination uh, is, uh, yeah. is no longer needed. So uh, maybe the question will need to uh, modify. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for excellent comments. Using artificial intelligence can uh, definitely help define as well or confirm the trajectory. But uh, when we bring it to practice, because we wanted to have a scheme that uh, is welcomed by the conservative uh, industry, because when we approach them with uh, artificial intelligence, sometimes they do not understand or they hesitate, still they resist. So, but when we give them a very simple solution, okay, this is a sigma, you don't need to do anything, just uh, is predefined, that's it. And they would uh, be very happy. That's why PID, for example, is still being used while we have advances in uh, artificial intelligence. But definitely we will look into it. And uh, in fact, the research groups uh, uh, here at Warwick University, we have uh, Intelligent Control and Smart Energy Research Group. Uh, our yeah, yeah. primary uh, <laughs> uh, expertise is intelligent control and we have brilliant uh, students working on artificial intelligence applying yes. in, on off offshore renewables autonomous uh, airplanes submarines everything uh, and, yeah i think uh, yeah by yeah. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence we maybe we cannot uh, directly use it uh, in the real control system but it can help us gain some experience in exactly, defining yes. the yeah control parameters yeah yeah, also it can help with uh, unsupervised data that we mentioned, we have uh, data latency, data issues when we want to measure rock off, et cetera. So it could be helpful. That brings yes. me to another uh, uh, aspect uh, about the ICSE is that uh, uh, we have students from China and sponsored by CSE scholarship. So I, I'd be delighted to invite students from Shandong University uh, through scholarships they can apply uh, we have talented students from Tsinghua, uh, different uh, universities uh, from China, and they do the second men through uh, CSC scholarship here as well. Also, uh, time to time, there is announcement on PhD scholarships and postdoctoral uh, research fellowships. So you're welcome to apply uh, and join the research group or at least visit. So it's also opportunity for our uh, colleagues in different, uh, in Russia, uh, China, Netherlands, India, uh, and the rest of the world. So you're welcome to visit us as well. Uh, yes, great. Just to mention, when it comes to artificial intelligence, uh, there is a paper which uh, I published together with, with one of my postdocs, it is Raju. It's a paper for estimation of system inertia using uh, ordinary neural network. And one of attendees, this is uh, Mila Mitrovic, he worked a bit uh, on improving this approach by utilizing deep learning approaches. And uh, this is definitely something what is feasible, which is manageable, what can be done. And uh, that's a very good topic. Great. Uh, more questions uh, from the audience. Uh, there was one question from Stefan uh, about okay. uh, the. Okay, yes, Stefan asked about facilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, sorry, so, uh, okay. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, I, I think I explained uh, pretty much what it was, but uh, so as I mentioned, we have three labs, uh, the renewable energy integration, offshore renewable energy uh, lab, we do extensive research on offshore renewable. And in fact, the head of research group, uh, Professor Xiaowei Zhao, um, I don't have the slide with me, just a second, if I, uh, apologies, if I can find uh, one introduction about the research team. Did I delete it? Yes, I deleted from here. Um, so for presentation. I'm looking for one introduction of uh, him. Okay, I don't have it here. Okay, anyway, so Professor Xiaowei Zhao uh, established this lab. Um, few years ago, and um, 
Mustafa, so you already have, uh, have this slide in which you presented, actually. Mustafa, actually, it looks that you have missed uh, this part of presentation in which uh, okay, uh, yes, yes. facilities were presented. Maybe okay. you were not at that time. Yes, yes. So in this lab, uh, well, anyway, he established this lab. Uh, everyone joins and now is developing. We have an independent research building. Uh, I think the only uh, research group that we have our own building. And it's a small microgrid building as well, totally green, using the PV panel 17 kilowatt with 30 kilowatt of uh, battery. Uh, we have four uh, emulators, a uh, big grid emulators, three uh, power electronic load emulators connected to a microgrid bus bars. Everything you can control it, uh, especially these four, can control it through real time simulators. We have a motor generator set arrived two weeks ago and uh, needs to be connected. Uh, and then everyone can uh, communicate to one another or the hardware. So mostly uh, I use Modbus communication. It's also possible to do uh, to use analog cables, but Modbus, I find it uh, very uh, easy and interesting to use. So uh, you can use uh, TCP IP links, uh, control all the facilities uh, using uh, Opal RT in real time and uh, through dedicated IP addresses. You model the system in MATLAB Simulink or Power Factory, uh, Dick Solin Power Factory. Yeah. Then uh, you can extend it, uh, integrate it into the Opalarity real-time simulators and run it in real time uh, uh, through sending signal and receiving them. Uh, um, we, we are expanding a hydrogen lab outside this building. That means uh, here is a parking. I mean, uh, uh, just here, so safe area. And we have a backyard garden as well. So we put it there. Uh, we are still expanding and uh, growing. Uh, this is, uh, I tried to speak it very fast. <laughs> I hope it helped. Yes, very good. Thank you very much, Mustafa, for saying that. Uh, and uh, okay. So great, uh, any further questions? Uh, we, I see also one of my former students. This is now Professor Jovan Mikulovic, uh, who was uh, head of uh, the group for electrical power systems uh, at the School of uh, Electrical Engineering in Belgrade. If you see, I, interestingly, this logo, I have all logos, but somehow my image was such that I have Delft uh, and Belgrade and the University of Singapore. So Jovan, uh, how are you doing? Any Anything to your side? Uh, <coughs> I'm doing well. I would like to apologize, apologize to all. Uh, I didn't uh, take into account difference between summer and winter time in Serbia. So <laughs> I am one hour late to, today. <laughs> you're, you're always welcome. So it's uh, confusing. Now we have two hours difference. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Three hours difference. So that uh, we, we have only, only Moscow standard time. There is yes, no yes. summer or something like that. Well, uh, Jovan, uh, I am aware that uh, as a result of a project with the uh, European Commission, uh, there will be some laboratory facilities uh, which are, should come through the project uh, in which Pezia, uh, uh, Stefano, Professor Stefano is involved. Yes, he overtook your responsibility, yes. yes. That's good. Uh, so yes, it, and it is, his work is jointly with the Delft. They are working with, together with Delft. That, 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 uh, okay, that. I know. Pop of electrons. Yes, good. Fine. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much, Jovana. Jovana. Uh, any further questions from the audience? Uh, it looks that we have practically exhausted uh, all questions. Uh, and uh, as we traditionally do that, uh, I would uh, suggest that we now make a joint uh, photograph. Uh, where you please, uh, can you organize that okay. uh, as usual? Thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, for all audience, if you have a camera, please turn it on and uh, we will make a joint photograph. Thank you. Uh, Mm, very nice. Then we have uh, fewer students because uh, 
many students today are waiting for the results of their job interview. So it's a big day for, for them. Oh, all right. Good luck to, the, to all of them. Thank you. OK. Great. Uh, I'm now taking the photo. Three, two, Hi. one. OK, I've taken the photo. Thank you. Great. So it's so nice that I, that we had this uh, uh, meeting today, that we had this invited lecture given by Dr. Mostafa Keshti. And let me express my thanks again in the first line to Mostafa, but also to all of you attending uh, this uh, uh, Friday seminar. And uh, next week, we will have the next one, and this will be um, given la, la. and delivered by uh, Dr. Li Dong. And the topic will be research on small signal modeling of voltage source converter HVDC system based on modular multi level converter. Excellent. So, with this, I'd like uh, to close this uh, seminar. Enjoy the rest of the day. I wish you a nice dinner. Good luck with the interviews. Uh, um, you in the continental part of Europe, I mean, uh, enjoy the day. It's still morning over there. Uh, and uh, we in uh, Russia, I will now go and find my way to the restaurant and have some, some, some lunch. Thank you very much to everybody. Zaijian, goodbye. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.